So here we have it, the British people have spoken and decision has been made on the UK government. Today, the 31st of January, 2020, we have officially Brexited. Brexit? Brexited. Whatever, we've left Europe. So why am I telling you this? What does this have to do with your business and how does this relate to Africa? Let me give you some context, but firstly, let me introduce myself. I'm Jacqueline and I am the director of Africa Fashion Guide. I'm the author of the pioneering book Fashion Africa and I'm working with you to bring sustainable solutions to your African fashion sourcing strategies. So that helps, so it's all about helping you reach your business goals by going from sourcing to sampling to sales. So early 2020, I attended meetings around the UK Africa Investment Summit and I joined as much as I could. I was even invited by the Department for International Development of the UK government to moderate a panel with CDC, which is an investment organization, Hella, which is the production in Africa, Unilever, everyone knows Unilever, and Helios Partners, also investors. And on top of that, there was a few other specialists on the panel. You see, the UK is building new ties of Africa for business, trade, manufacturing, and more. But right now, you may have seen the influx of African Americans who traveled to Africa. They were exploring and were also becoming introduced to opportunities on the ground and, you know, Diaspora have been flocking back there. And I predict, I predict, I predict for 2020, there'll be a surge of UK businesses doing the same. Mark my words. So I wanted to give you some feedback to what happened at the event that I attended and to share you, you know, the takeaways so that you can see why having a fashion business in Africa, especially this year, and doing that is one of the best moves you can do right now. So let's go in the main summit. <laughs> so Africa, they said, could lead because it can leapfrog of what everybody else has been doing. It can dive their head, okay? There's quotes um, that Africa, by 2100, will be about 40% of the population they will be African. This is what the World Bank have been saying. So there's a strong feeling that was, given, um, that was given about giving back, supporting the next generation, especially African leaders. But the continuous recognition that Africa is one of the fastest growing regions in the world, especially that with prospective female entrepreneurs. And with the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement, and also our work here at Africa Fashion Guide, we help to frame this conversation. So we'll start to see a lot of leapfrogging and ultimately finding solutions will all come from Africa. So we'll see lots of new things happening and that the world must focus on partnering with African government, partner with African businesses and seek opportunities to work with local investors. This is what's going on. So the next de decade that we're now in is a decade of growth and opportunity is one to move to realize the potential where ultimately the people of Africa are positively impacted and empowered to realize their potential, right? So that's what was one of some of the big takeaways of the main UK Africa Investment Summit, but going into the panel that I moderated, which was within the pre-summit event, which was all about manufacturing. So that means it's a big area for the UK government. So CDC, their representative called Belinda, was asked, she was, well, she said she's been always asked this question, she hears it often, can I afford to be in Africa? Can I afford to be in Africa? That's what she says people are always saying. But her response is, can you not afford to be in Africa? She urges companies to geographically diversify and highlights that urbanization on the continent is causing Africa to grow. African cities will cause consumer growth in Africa and great opportunities are happening and fast moving consumer goods is leading the way. This is good if you're in the fashion industry, this is good. So she tells us that consumer products and goods is where people are seeking to invest and it's where growth is being projected so the African consumer base itself is growing. So the opportunity on the ground, there's an opportunity to work with Africa. And then Dougie from Unilever, the representative for the day, he advised that those who are entering to do business in Africa to firstly invest in cities over countries. That was his advice. Interesting, right? Um, I'm not sure how they work in the fashion industry because it's so interconnected with countries and then connecting countries but anyway he's uh, he um, shared there was a few trends happening on production in a whole so, you know unilever produces a lot of the household goods that we use today so he said that i think he said that 2.5 billion 
people around the world use their products go figure anyway so a few trends on production that he mentioned was shifting global production he also mentioned there was always also a movement african technology and understanding of this was growing and that there was a trend in the rise of African brands, so locally grown African brands. I'm so excited about this. But the challenge is that he saw that we all probably, those really in African, do African business, recognise is around import costs and logistics. And this can force you to be in hubs. So we gave these tips. Number one, number one, think with a long game horizon, not short term. This will be rewarding, so long game. Number two is recognize it's a fast changing dynamic environment. So build this into your planning. And number three is all about ecosystem. A lot of smart talking can create scale. And this is what it's all about. Ecosystems, ecosystems, especially in the fashion industry, where it's so connected with so many moving parts, ecosystem, blockchain, all of this stuff can really support him. So these were some of the major takeaways from the manufacturing pre-summer events, okay? Now, this next one, I love, I love, I love. I went as a guest, was invited to come by the CEO of Lionesses of Africa for their Startup Africa Night. And I was so, so blown away, so blown away. First of all, the event was hosted by Emma Wade Smith, OBE, she's Her Majesty's Trade Commissioner for Africa. Yep, royalty. Well, she's a royalty, but she hangs with royalty, let's put it that way. And together with Melanie Hawkins, the founder and CEO of Lionesses of Africa, it was interesting to hear from the speakers that they brought that, you know, and it was good to know a lot of tips and advice for women businesses um, who attended this packed out, crazy packed out event, you know, about what to do in regards to starting your business, doing investment, do business in Africa. Chartered Bank um, had um, a presenter, Megan McDonald, and she was sharing about the kind of things to look for um, when you're going to an investment bank, the kind of things that they want to see when they speak to you as a business owner. These are like great nuggets. She says that they, the things they were looking for is that you have the X factor, that you show scalability, that you are sustainable, and that you show that you make impact and governance and give transparency. But that, above all, that you need to be patient and you need to be present at the same time. Real talk, okay? She said, don't just wait for things to be perfect to start, which is what many people do. You wait till everything is in place, till all the ducks are in the road. You don't have to wait. Do look for long-term investment, though, and do look for long-term partnerships. This, she says, is key. One of the other panelists that was speaking was, um, oh gosh, this is one of the powerhouse. No, you're just like, yes. Yes, 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 <laughs> somebody speaking. Her name is Miss Adenike Ogunlesi of Rough and Tumble. She is a powerhouse in the garment industry. She's had many, she's seen many moons um, in her time working in Africa's 
garment industry. She shared some strong and passionate thoughts that personally got me a bit pumped up. She said that you have to convince the bank that you're a bankable product. Show them figures, show them your books. Too many people are going to the banks and they've got ideas. Now, investors, this is my little takeaway. Investors don't invest in ideas. They invest in, as she was saying, bankable products. You're showing them evidence. You're showing things that you've done. And you're showing them that you are right for them to invest in. For her, she passionately told the audience that nothing is going to change unless you support women. That you must put money into women in Africa. And that in economic empowerment gives women a voice. <laughs> it sure does. And this allows things to change. I love this woman. I love this woman. Somebody tell her I love her. Okay. But she's so true. I mean, you support a woman. She's going to be investing back. She's going to be lifting the community. She's going you know, up the children, she's supporting the grandfathers and grandmothers of that villages and the, and the towns and so forth. Investing women is key. I'm with her. I'm with her. So this was followed by pictures by the most amazing women, amazing women. Two of them were from the fashion industry and yeah, gosh, wonderful. First was Nicola Luther. She's a creative director and CEO of Southern or South, Southern, South, South African brand. It's in the Southern African region, but it's specifically South Africa. And the brand is called Luna, okay? It's a sustainable fashion design house. It's a manufacturer and a retailer, and they do the most gorgeous products using the most gorgeous textiles. Go check them out. At Luna, we have committed to only using 100% natural fibers. The washing of synthetic fabrics accounts for 85% of all the man made materials in our oceans. As regards waste, a staggering 50% of the 150 billion new garments produced globally every year ends up in the land that is all being bred within 12 months of being made. In contrast to this fast disposable fashion, Luna aims to create clothing that is timeless and durable, lasting 10 years whilst keeping its quality and design appeal. Fashion is a labor-intensive industry, providing opportunity for job creation, particularly amongst women. This speeds up economic development as women generally reinvest a high percentage of their income back into their communities. There is huge potential for growth in the fashion industry in Africa. Currently, only 1.9% of global manufacturing occurs in Africa, despite many of the raw materials being grown there. At Luna, all of our clothing is produced ethically within Africa to all class quality standards. Come on. Then another one that I just fell in love with was a lady called Mariam Hazim, um, which is a co founder of Reform Studio. And this one now, this one now, so they use an innovative fabric manufacturer, or they are an innovative fabric manufacturer that turns recycled plastics into exciting, durable textiles made for the production of a wide range of luxury and commercial products they do like bags so you can see pictured here they do bags they also do furnishing products and she fuses them the recycled plastic with egyptian cotton <sighs> egyptian cotton <laughs> love it okay check out these pictures love 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 okay now the next part of these events i know there's a lot of events i didn't get to go to all of them there was also events with um the ethical apparel africa and they were bringing together some of ghana's um fashion manufacturers and they invited people along buyers and those and did a talk around that at the ghana embassy here in london and then there was this event which was a two-day event it was a ghana investment opportunity summit and this was really interesting. The focus was on technology, agriculture, manufacturing, digitization, to name a few. But these were big focuses. And common themes that I heard around this event was the topic of value addition, specifically to Ghana, of course, and its raw materials. Also, the topic of creating more jobs for youth and of supporting the president's vision to contribute to Ghana's future. It's all about beyond aid. And I love that. I love that. So being the headquarters for the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, which is amazing, well done to Ghana. Okay, it means opportunities for Ghana to become the gateway of Africa and to fulfill their vision of accessing a common market through Ghana. Everything's through Ghana. I love it. I mean, they say they're the center of the earth. So 
Yeah, amazing. So the aim is for Ghana to become a service provider for the entire continent and for the UK and Ghana to kind of, you know, get in, not get in better care, I don't want to say that, but to get more connected. Okay, so to have collective narratives in a cultural exchange for technology and digitization. This is great. So the speakers raise uh, discussions and um, points which were all around government, compliance, sustainability, and this amazing mantra, grow green, grow fast, grow together. Isn't that just kind of cool? It's kind of cool, right? And then the man himself, Ghana's president, Nana Okufa Ado, and the rest of his names was very long, he gave his keynote speech. I love this guy, but he's, I mean, this, I really tried, guys. I really, really tried to get that selfie with him, but he just, he just wasn't having it. But one day, one day, we will make it happen. President Nana, we will make it happen. But he proudly welcomed the idea of having a common voice, a common purpose to exploit the raw materials for the benefit of African people. Don't you just love that for African people? Finally, people, governments thinking about their own people. Love that. This man is just presenting the way things could be done for the whole continent. He recognized that trade between African nations has been low. Okay, it's fair enough compared to like other continents and other regions. Okay, and their own trade system. That's fine. But that he recognized that African trade showed great opportunities. Look what this can do for the fashion industry. More trade between African countries. So those who are um, the cotton, cotton growers, those who have the mills and the gineries, those who have the, the weaving and the, the um, knitting capabilities and then the manufacturing, they can all be working more together to kind of create like a blockchain system or a, you know, a, a, an ecosystem. Remember that takeaway from the main event? The ecosystem for the fashion industry all coming together. And this I just love. So he saw the economy will be shaped not by exports of raw materials, but by things we grow. I say we because I, I adopt myself as an African. Uh, not born there, but I adopt myself as one. Anyway, um, by the things that we grow and that this requires some kind of thinking outside of the box. Okay. And it's an approach to gain solutions, but it must be different to what brought the problem. So the thinking that you had, or thinking that you're gonna need for the solutions has to be different to the thinking and the ways of doing things that brought those problems in the beginning. So let me give you the three big takeaways, okay? Number one, number one, having a common voice and a common purpose. Africa working together, trading and building one strong Africa. Seriously, I'm just like power to the people and all that. Come on. So, uh, number two, you know, you have to have FaceTime, you know, uh, this bit of connection speaking, no WhatsApp, no BB Messenger, if that's even still a thing, no Facebook Messenger, none of this stuff. FaceTime, let me see. Businesses can't stay in London. Africa is a place with expertise and it takes going out there, meeting people yes it takes a lot of hard work and focus to do business in africa but getting there is key this is why we do our fashion africa sourcing trips and we take people like yourself to uh, right now to ghana to kenya to meet with manufacturers meet with the government officials meet with the key people so you can just go and do business straight away just like that just like that so you can want to join our trips there's details below this video that you can look at to join our fast ghana or fast kenya trips okay point number three to exploit raw goods for the benefit of african people when this comes with trade between the nations and african nations and it comes from also consumer power even local consumer power so economies will be shaped not by exports as president nana did say not by the exports of raw materials but by things that we grow as well as ghana's um, beyond aid there's another narrative around backing locally made products and it's not just that it's not just in that one country others are talking about it it's kind of creating a, an opportunity for a premium african story can you see it can you really see it can you feel it can you feel the movement i'm loving it so where does this leave you as an african fashion business owner i'm getting to the point now <laughs> i'm giving you the foundation i give you the takeaways where does this leave you first of all 
I want to see your comments as well. Put your comments below as well. Let me know what you think about it. Make sure, have you even subscribed? Subscribe to the channel so you can get more of this goodness, okay? But do leave some comments and let me know how you have taken away these takeaways so far, okay? What you thought, were you at those events? Let me know. So what does this mean for you as a key, as an African fashion business owner? First of all, you need to realize that Africa is a key location for your fashion business sourcing. And you've got to realize that Africa is, hello, now, today, is happening. In my opinion, now, delaying starting is simply giving up your seat at the table. It's saying, oh, I'm not ready now. Somebody else could just swoop in and take my place. The thing is, Africa is calling, but will you answer? Hello, Africa. How are you doing? I'm ready. Let's do this. Let's make action. Let's put things together. Let's export. Let's work together. Africa's calling. Lovely to meet you. So that was Africa calling. Now I'm back with you. Okay, so will you answer? <laughs> you got to laugh at yourself, right? So maybe this is your challenge. You have a great African fashion business idea, but maybe you're like, I'm concerned because I don't have fashion experience. I don't have the fashion training. I haven't got years in the industry. I haven't yet been to Africa. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know where to get started. I've got this, I don't know where to get started. Maybe you're frustrated because you don't have contacts on the ground. Maybe you know the other stuff. You don't have any connections. So look, my friend, can I give you a solution? Are you ready? Thank you for a solution. Just like what Belinda said, it's not to question, should I do business in Africa? But should you not do business in Africa? So let me give you that solution. Look, it's the um, January, this point right now is January 31st at the time of recording this video of 2020, the time that this video was recorded. The UK has officially Brexited Europe, now separate to that. And it's a new year and it's a new decade. So there's been a lot of stuff happening, especially for your UK business, it's going to affect things. Generally, there's going to be new trade policies coming out, there's going to be new um, um, relationships being formed, new opportunities, you've heard all the things I've just mentioned. So this is time for you to start your 2020 or continue your 2020 with the right support to help you make your unique product in the right country, in Africa, with the right suppliers. I have the tools and I have the connections to cut your time, cut your overwhelm, and destroy the myths surrounding fashion business in Africa. So let's talk about how together we can get your business on the right road through my one-to-one -one support, through my business coaching support, through my supply networks, and even, as I mentioned before, our trips, taking you direct to the, to the makers so you can do business straight away. See the link below for more details and book a call to speak with me. All you need to do is go to www fashionafricatalks.com and book your time to speak with me. But just remember, how this decade shows up in your life will largely be based on the decisions that you make today. So my kind of advice, make 2020 your African decade. Ready? I'm waiting for you. Link below, Fashion Africa Talks, book a call, and can't wait to talk to you.